lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim I 
praise your heart during the broadcast because you know they was talking about your serious matter last. Oh, but the Lord brought them through. So we so glad tonight to be here. And uh, my husband, my husband Lester, was supposed to be here. I think he done went back there and lay across the bed. You know what that means. He back there. Mm. You know uh, you know what I mean. Hallelujah. Amen. But anyhow, let's get ready. Let's see what's going to happen tonight. I bet you they got something good. Not the minute a word power is getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. With Apostle Vincent L. Smith on the voice. Well, bless the Lord tonight. All of God's people, welcome to the voice. On tonight, I am your host. Apostle Vincent L. Smith, amen, New Haven, Connecticut. And we thank God for yet another opportunity to come on this podcast and to be a blessing, amen, unto you and yours. In Jesus' name, amen, we bless God for every last one of you on tonight. Amen. And this is a new month, the 4th of August. Amen. July is gone. The 4th of August. Let me check. Amen. I'm going for a sound check. Check on the mic. Check on the mic. Amen. Let me see how the mic is working. It's early. It's early. Amen. Overseer Ernest E. Richard Jr., are you with us tonight? Yeah, he told me that I could sit in here for our Overseer Ernest E. Richard. He, he said he'll be right back. He, he over there, uh, he got a salad all stuck in his face, and, and he, he told me, sit here till you finish eating. But he here. Uh, oh, don't choke. Don't choke. Uh, no, you can't choke. There's no choking on the voice. Get out the way. Oh, you yeah. don't like people. Hi, Apostle. How you doing? Bless the Lord, man of God. Bless the Lord. Oh, bless you, sir. How are you today? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Man, this is the day, day that the Lord has made. I'm sorry, Sister Kimmy Kim. I had to borrow that. <laughs> Amen. You know, also, we just got off the line. With this great man of God praying for the people with God with such fervency and power and fire, the Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow. Amen. Are you with us, man of God? Well, um, you know, um, him prayed and him prayed. Him prayed all night long. Him prayed and he prayed until he found the Lord. Praise God. And so since him prayed, him told me to hang out with you tonight. Praise God. So I hope you don't mind. Uh, you know, this is other friend. Uh, who's that on my phone? Get off my phone. Get off my phone. The Lord bless you there, Apostle. Thank God for the voice tonight. We're looking forward to what the Lord is going to do. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And then let me take a flight and go out to the Midwest and let me see if the brightest woman, amen, in that area is on the line that Dr. Kimmy Kim Robinson. Are you with us tonight? Hey, 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 it's Kimmy. <laughs> I was trying to be, you know, All you know, right. you guys, but, <laughs> but hey, 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 <laughs> I'm ready. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> song for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. Hey, man, do we have Mr. G. Robinson? 
I mean, G. Johnson, God have mercy. All right. Let's stay out in the central state. Amen. Do we have evangelist Anna Henderson tonight? Okay. Did somebody right. say something? All right. Nope. I guess. I don't think she's here at the moment. So we shall continue on. Amen. In our last month's series, you need to go back and listen at it. Amen. In our last month's series, we did a uh, wonderful job talking about the LGBTQ community. And do they belong in our churches? And if they belong, how do they belong? Why do they belong? And why and what way should we be treating them? So I admonish you, go back, hear the tape. Hey, I'm going to be real naughty to you tonight. I'm not even going to give you any information. Go listen at it. It'll bless your life in Jesus' name. Well, yeah. tonight we will begin a new conversation tonight. I don't know if it will wind up being a series or what it's going to be, but we're going to start a new talk tonight. And we thank God uh, early in the morning. I woke up with this scripture on my mind. Really, it came out of my spirit. And when I woke up, Psalms 1 began to resound in my spirit. Psalms 1. And we're only going to look, we're only going to read, I should say, verse 1, 2, and 3. And our emphasis is going to come out of verse 3. Mm -hmm. We will read 1, 2, and 3 for the listening audience. Amen. Tell a neighbor, tell a friend. Tune in, the voice is on. Glory to God. All right, if we are ready, someone read verse 1, 2, and 3 out of Psalm 1. Do we want to pray in Psalm um, 1? Well, well, we'll read and then we're going to pray All right. before we get into it. Okay. Psalm 1. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, and whatsoever he doeth, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Overseer, give us our prayer tonight. Precious Father, as we come again before you, we thank you once again for your loving kindness and your tender mercies, God. We pray to be let down into the storehouse, into the deepest portions of your wisdom and understanding. Heavenly Father, as we take this time to share this word with the people who are listening, whether they're on radio or whether they're on social media, God, open down our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Father God, we have this confidence in you that that which we are asking according to your word is being performed and manifested even as we speak. We thank you that you shall be glorified as a result of this, for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. We thank God tonight. Uh, out of this Psalm 1. Amen. And I believe I on the wrong verse. Amen. I believe it's verse number 2 that I want to put emphasis on. Amen. But we're going to talk about where is your appetite? All right. Where mm. is your appetite? Amen. Read that Psalm 1 again, please. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But now his delight is, mm-hmm, is in the law of the Lord, uh-huh. and in his law doth take day and night. And he is a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen, amen. Where is your appetite? And so we see, first of all, in this first verse, a warning of types of that we should not have our fellowship tied into. Blessed is the what man that does what? Walks not. Walks not. That walks not in the counsel of what kind of people? The ungodly. The ungodly. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What is this thing, the counsel of the ungodly? Somebody talk to us. All right. Go ahead. I believe the counsel of the ungodly is the advice of those who don't have beneficial advice to offer in a nutshell. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, and well, I'm going to tack on to that. The counsel of the ungodly, as Apostle Whitlow has said, the advice they don't uh, they don't use what the ungodly gives them to uh, move forward in certain things, certain areas of life. When you're talking about the counsel of the ungodly, you might be talking about anything under the sun. It's like playing Russian roulette. There's one bullet in the chamber, and the one that might the, the one bullet in the might be the end of your life if you listen to their counsel. Amen, amen. Uh, just very quickly, can we pull that up in the amplified, and, and let's get a, a, diff, a clearer look at this at this uh, psalm. I, I have you. It says. Go ahead, sir. Bless. It says, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridicules. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers and comes to full maturity. Okay. Now, we see in a more clear picture that the counsel, can I put it, I'm going to put it this way. The counsel of ungodly people is when you talk to those who are not anointed to say what they're saying to you. Amen. That, 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 there's no leading. There's no leading of the Spirit. That, that, there's, no. No, that, there's no oil from God. 
God for what they're giving you. And, and it's dangerous to take advice from somebody that's not being led of the Spirit. And, and I'm going to give you an example of that. And then I'm going to let these brothers talk to you about it. Here, here's where you need to run. When you're trying to get a spiritual answer and you're talking to somebody unspiritual and the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, well, the way I see it. Uh-huh. The problem is. Or, the way- or they come out of their mouth saying, uh, uh, the way I feel about it. Well, mm-hmm. those, those are two, those are two direct ways of going into your conversation that you are about to get a mouthful of chicken trash in your mouth. Mm-hmm. And I don't know nobody that eats chicken flesh. No. I don't know if but not chicken flesh. So. Hey, nah. now, when you get the ungodly, you get ready to get a mouthful of trash. Go ahead, Amen. Brother. Well, I, I, I like the way you put that. Go ahead. I like I like the way you put that. When you when you get advice from the ungodly, you're getting a, a mouth full of trash. So I guess you're talking about, you know, having to hear from trash talkers. Nothing is worse than listening to trash talkers because all they do is talk trash. Nothing they say is beneficial. Nothing they say is helpful. Nothing they say is healthy. It's all trash. Good for nothing but straight up trash. Well, mm. to add to that, the scripture tells us in Corinthians that uh, filthy communication corrupts good morals. And we have to understand is when you're getting counsel from people who are corrupt to begin, you're basically getting ready to settle for second, third, and even fourth best. You might as well, uh, to take the trash analogy, uh, you know, and uh, my heart breaks when I see this, but this is what we're talking when we talk about counsel. Wise counsel is not going to go find the first thing you can find and just decide that that's from God. Wise counsel is going to want what makes the most sense, spiritually speaking. Wise counsel wants a word from our eye. The analogy of the trash can, I know you've seen uh, homeless that have gone into trash cans. They're hungry, so let's just be real about it. I don't mean any homeless person, any disrespect, so I don't want anybody on this broadcast or anybody listening to think I'm belittling homeless people, but when you see them going into the trash can and they're trying to find something that they think might make a decent meal because that's all they can handle, we got folk who are looking for advice from people. Uh, I, I, I got $100, and I want to invest it in something. Well, George, what should I do with this $100? Well, why don't you just give it to me? Yeah, okay. I would say this to cut this, to wrap this whole thing up. Taking wise counsel from a godly person is like a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat that ain't there. Mm. Well, I, I want to go a little further with something you said. Uh, it's like the homeless man that is digging in the garbage trying mm-hmm. to find something to eat. Mm-hmm. Why believe us in the garbage? Mm. Come on. Come Somebody on. Talk to me. Dr. Kim, you talk to me. Why is the believer in the garbage looking for something for their soul? My God. <laughs> Thank you. She must Come be on, Dr. Mm-hmm. Um What do you let, pick it up? Can I throw a few things out there if you don't mind until she comes on? 
The believers in the trash looking for something to eat because, A, number one, they've lowered their standards. Number two, they would rather walk in a melancholy, mediocre anointing, which really doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Number three, they're lazy. Number four, they just, they'll just they just accept whatever comes. What, I wish I could find the right word to say it because and I know this type of person seen this type of person, you know, you could turn around, uh, well, here it is, I got a good example, just give me seven seconds, Apostle, here you go, some years ago, I said to a congregation that a lot of you don't really listen very carefully when it comes to the preaching of the word, and of course, you get the people murmuring and complaining, and I said, well, you know, in the process of today, I'm going to prove to you what I'm talking about, so I kept talking, and then I turned around and said, mm, I feel something coming. I feel my spirit rising. I need to tell you a story about a man named Jack. Poor Mountaineer. Barry kept his man. And then you got folks about, yeah, go ahead. I just turned around and said, I just scratched my head. I just got finished telling these folks you don't listen. This type of person will take whatever comes and call it gospel. What, what are you saying, Whit? Well, the Bible did say that in these days there would be people who have itching ears. Yes. So they're, they're listening for what makes them happy. It's unfortunate mm-hmm. that people are in pursuit of that which makes them happy and not with that which makes them healthy in the spirit. Yeah. Let, me, let me say that again. They're, they're interested in that which makes them happy, but not that which makes them healthy in the spirit. You know, when I came up, when I received a plate of food, my plate had vegetables on it. Matter yeah. of fact, I didn't like my vegetables. My mother told me I couldn't have no treats until I ate everything, including my vegetables. Amen. So at that time I didn't at that time I didn't I didn't eat broccoli. I didn't think it was right. So I mean, asparagus, oh heck no. But over the Me. course of time I had to deal with some stuff. Did not uh-huh. realize how important it was for my health. And they teach you that green a day keeps the doctor away. So I learned right. how to eat greens green vegetables so that it would help me. Some stuff I may not like, but some stuff can be, if you will, seasoned for your taste. I want to say this to somebody. Stop looking, stop listen, listening for those things that may not be healthy for you. Stop listening for those things that you can jump up over. Everybody wants that message that the preacher preaches that will make them jump and shout, but they don't want the one that makes them search themselves and check themselves and put themselves in the right place with God. No, that's not what they want. That's because they have itching ears. They're Man. taking anything they can get. And I learned, and the other thing my mama taught me, you don't eat from everybody's kitchen because that's, that's how right. you get sick. All right, that's all I'm going to say right there for now. Now watch That's this. A, oh. Watch this. It, it says, "Blessed is the man." Yeah. That does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh huh. Now watch this. Why is it? And I'm not going to ask this, but just from the Christian standpoint. But what makes it so accessible, so easy, so relaxed to get counsel Mm -hmm. from an uncounseling person? Mm. What, what, Mm. What has gone? What has gone on? What is going on? that people are comfortable taking counsel from somebody that is not counseling person. Oh, well, 
Well, you know what? That's a good question. I'd like to submit. First of all, that's a good question. And what I've discovered is that some people desire someone to show them some attention, someone who will show them some kind of affection, someone who will give them some kind of validation. So the reason Mm -hmm. they look for that is because they're hoping that they're going to get those things from that individual because that's what they really want. That's what they really desire. And that's what they really need. That's what they think mm-hmm. they need. I, I, I would say this, too. There are some people that can't eat, like you said earlier, Apostle Whitlow, healthy things. They want a lot of mm-hmm. candy. They want a lot of candy, something sweet, sweet to the taste, you know, not realizing that that sweet taste will cause cavities and cause their teeth to rot out. A lot of us are in Position now in this day and age where we, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not against preaching at all, not at all. I like to teach, and I, I prefer teaching over preaching, but to the preacher that preaches, bless your heart, because even in that, I can learn something. But there are some folk who need to learn how to eat the meat of the word through teaching. Everything is not going to be wrapped, tied, or tangled in sensationalism. You know? Mm-hmm. So, I, I heard you say something. You said they're looking for candy. So let, uh-huh. me see if I, let me see if I can find candy. Just like candy. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> so when you say they're looking for candy, are uh-huh. you saying are you saying to us tonight, candy searching person is really looking for somebody that's going to agree with their thoughts, not so much yes. with the spirit? Exactly. Mm. There's somebody or, that's or they're going, going to fall. agree with the way I feel. Uh huh. I know the Lord is calling me to preach. But uh-huh. I just need somebody to sympathize with me and tell me, well, maybe if you pray a little longer, you might find out he said something else. Mm-hmm. Is that what we're saying? Exactly what we're saying. I need somebody uh I need somebody to agree with my off kilter left field you know, two right shoes bent to the left thought process. I need somebody to agree with my short bus process. I need somebody to agree with my padded room thinking. And if I can find one person that will agree with what, where I'm going, as far as I'm concerned, that's a wise man or that's a wise woman. Well, that, that again, it shows how much people – are looking for validation and not mm-hmm. necessarily the voice of the Lord. What I love is that when uh, when the Lord saw his son, he made it clear, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Bible says there was a fame that went out about Jesus. Now, now what right. I've discovered is that they want fame, so they want people who go praise them and, and make big fuss about them and whatnot so that they can feel like they're somebody. Uh Because everybody want to feel like somebody, like they belong, like they have some kind of purpose. Amen. All right, so it says, blessed is the man Uh that walketh not in the counsel. Y'all stay with me now because I'm getting ready to say something. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of foolish talking. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, of you know what? Directed conversation. Look, 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 look at that explanation in, in, in the Amplified again. I'm read doing it. Just that mm-hmm. Read just that portion again. Blessed, fortunate, 
prosperous and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following of the very an example. The counsel of the who? Of the wicked. And what else did it say? Nor stand in the path of nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, those who ridicule. So, so, so Apostle Whitlow, according to the Amplified Version, mm-hmm. the counsel of the ungodly is people that have a plot, plan, and strategy to mess up your spiritual purpose and potential because it says that don't walk with wicked folk. The mm-hmm. counsel mm-hmm. of wicked That's people. Now, 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 Whitmer, I know, I know, I'm going to give this to you, but I know you're not getting ready to tell these folks on these podcasts that there are wicked folk that you have to watch out for even in the church, <laughs> not just your natural life. But even in the church, I know you're not getting ready to tell them that. Yes, he is. Come on, with. I mean, it is the real thing. It is the real thing. This is what people are looking for. It brings them validation. It makes them feel important. Makes them feel like they belong. They have a sense of worth. That, that's just it. That's it. Listen, the counsel of the ungodly is not helpful. No. It is only hurtful continually. I don't know who this is for, but you better stop listening to the folk who ain't got no relationship with God. They want to give you advice that they want to apply to their own life. Something wrong with that picture, I'm just saying. Now, Apostle Whitlow, you just said something right there. You know we've had for years, even past who would say, don't do as I do, do as I say do? What kind of counsel do you think that is? Honestly. It is it, it is the praise of self. Uh-huh. Don't that's do as I say. That's the see, praise of self. That is a praise of self. But when somebody tells me to don't do as I do, do as I say do, that's meaning... You're putting your, you, you're excusing yourself from towing the line. You're excusing yourself from walking the straight and the narrow. Now there are three areas right here that the, the writer of Psalms is talking about. He talks about not walking in something, and he talks about not standing in something, and then he talks about not sitting in something. What do those three positions have in common? Think about this. Well. What do those- if we look at it, if we uh-huh. look at it, I don't care what dictionary you look in, mm-hmm. that word walk always means to be in progression. That's right. In movement. Mm-hmm. And see, that's why I was saying a few minutes ago, you got to be dealing with ungodly people. Because can we all just say this simple phrase? You'll mess around and it'll be a setup. It sure will. Can I hear somebody it, say something? Mm, if it you're sure not will. Careful, if you're not careful messing around with the counsel of ungodly people, they're going to set you for the trap. Not yeah. the treasure. Not the tragic. You walking around, and let me tell you something. They're smart enough not to do that that look like they're against you. Uh-oh. Come they're on. Not, they're, not, they're not going to show their trump card from the beginning. A good card player. That's your wish, Dave. You're not going to show that you got the trump the first time, the first card you throw out. 
You're waiting until the other team think they got you. Boom, you drop it on the table. Uh, give me that power right there. Amen. Amen. And I, now, I would say this, back in my day, I played poker. And I, might as well be, I, I wasn't that great, but I was good enough. And the one thing I, I wanted, if I had a rotten hand, I would do everything I could to try to bluff you into folding. And that was a, that was a, I'm trying to make a power play to make you give up the pot, give up the kitty, without me having to show my hand. What do you think the enemy does? He uses ungodly people. See? Come on. It's all a set up to get you what? Off your walk. Off your walk. Exactly. That's right. Where you used to be faithful to Bible study, now you hanging out at, 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 at Fridays to eat, eating, eating wings. And out there laughing and talking with the other crew that don't come to Bible study, whereby you used to be praying for them to come to Bible study. Now you out there eating with them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because not only did you take counsel, but you begin to be friends. Uh huh. Because everything they're saying looks like. Is God talking? But at the same mm-hmm. time, you don't even see yourself. Uh oh, here's a word we don't like to use no more. You don't even see yourself backsliding. Well, you know what? And, and, wow. let me say, and let me shake that word out for somebody. Backsliding does not mean you left God, backsliding means you're pulling away from that that you would do for God. Mm-hmm. Because the proper term, according to, to 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 the New Testament, the proper word for somebody that leaves God is falling from grace. Mm-hmm. That was that was just a, a little extra teaching moment. Ain't gonna cost you nothing. The Lord bless you. Amen. Well, uh, I mean, you know, so. Uh, let me let, let me do this and let me say this before I move forward, Apostle, with your permission. To those of you that are watching at this moment, we welcome you to the voice with Apostle Smith and Company. If you desire to join the conversation, you may dial in at six four six five six four nine eight or you can post your comments right here and we will share them with the radio audience. God bless you. I want to get back to that. I mean I look back then. Look how it starts out blessed. It talks about and fortunate, being prosperous. And here's my favorite right here. Favored by God. You know what it's like to be favored by God? When everybody else says you don't deserve it, God gives it to you anyway. When everybody else is saying you shouldn't have it, God's allowing you to get it. When everybody else is trying to figure out how to take it away from you, God is replenishing and Supplying. I like the, the writer of Psalms, Psalms uh, 23 and verse 5, when he says, Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemy. That's the favor of God right there. And because I've got God's Amen. favor, I have no desire to progress forward with foolishness. I have no desire to stand in a path that's going to cause my detriment. I, I might as well. Stand in front of a freight train if I'm going to ruin and wreck my life in that respect. You know what I mean? And definitely, I do not want to sit down with people that belittle other people, that put other people down, that treat other people like dirt, people that turn up their nose and act like they poop don't stink. That's just not my kind of person. Now, I'm sorry, maybe I ain't as saved as I thought I was, but the truth of the matter is I have a great disdain for people who have to put up down to make themselves look good. So, so here in the scripture, number one is you're blessed if you know how to stay away from the council of the okay, food. Amen. Mm-hmm. If you know how to stay away from the counsel of those who really have a wicked plan in mind, 
Yeah. He said, I'm talking to you, sister, sister and brother, blessed and highly favored. How you blessed and highly favored and about to run into a fire? Mm. I don't gasoline. know about you, but if, I don't know about you, but if my house is on fire, I want to run out, not run in. Yeah. Also, I'm going to tell you, we have folk who are running into a fire with gasoline laden drawers on. <clears throat> Unfortunately. <laughs> well, think yeah. about it. And sometimes, I, and I got to put this out there. And go ahead. Uh, God, when you stay around people long enough, uh-huh. you can start to sense and feel that they're not really for me. Mm, doesn't take long. So why doesn't do take- you stay? So why do you stay? Continue to walk with people that you can begin to feel they're not for me. Well, can I bite off of what you're saying right there? I got a thing, and I've been saying this for I don't know as long as I can. Re- if I can't be celebrated, mm-hmm. I. Re- to be tolerated, you know? I mean, if, if I'm not worth celebrating, I have no desire to be tolerated because when you're just tolerating me, you're just putting up with me. It's like you really don't want me to go anywhere. You don't want me to do anything. You don't want me to prosper. You don't want me to move forward. You wish I would get out of the way, but you ain't got enough to say I, have no, I want nothing else to do with you. And it's a sad thing. Uh, in the body of Christ, when we got people hurting, despondent, people who are disillusioned, people who are in disarray, and people who are looking for uh, uh, answers to questions, you know, they're baffled by, especially in this COVID-19. And here you got folk, uh, you know, still playing the blame game. I would often say, and I'm not saying this is true, this is earnest one and one, your salvation ain't got nothing to do with it. Playing the blame game is no better. I mean, it, it, it's not much better. Why don't you just say you don't? Why don't you just, you know, just tell the person you don't know? I mean, why am I looking for somebody to blame? I can't blame anybody for what's going on. I can say this. When I decide to go opposite of God's word, now I put myself in a position to be just like the other ones on Broadway. How about if I stay on the straight and narrow? Can that work? Come on. I'm just asking. Come on, I'm that's true. Out. Absolutely, absolutely. If you stay in, if you stay on the, the on the straight and narrow, it becomes hard to get into trouble. It becomes hard to get drawn away. It becomes mm-hmm. hard to mess up. It becomes hard to slip up. It becomes hard to operate in what is wrong. Point yeah. blank. Period. Amen. 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 So. so. Point one tonight is stay away from ungodly counsel. Yeah. I, I want to mm. I, I want to at home to every listener. Mm-hmm. Point number one. As a matter of fact, if you feel like you're not progressing in God, check who you got around you. That's right. Check who you've been hanging out with. Check who you've been calling your prayer partner. Check you got to check on all of that. See what counsel you've been taking. And you might just mm-hmm. find out you ain't been doing that but running in place and thought you were running around the place. Amen. Now, this next one says, told us not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. It said, don't do what next? Don't stand in the way of sinners. Don't wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't do what? Stand. Don't stand. In the path of sinners. Don't stand in the path of sinners. Uh Uh-oh, here it goes. Uh, Does that mean... Uh, here I am, a Christian, get ready to go to the club with my work friends. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, what can I? I I'm gonna 
interject something, and I know I'm not looking for everybody to agree with me. Uh, and if anybody disagrees, fine too. I like what Paul said in uh, when he spoke to the Corinthian church. He says, "All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. They're not helpful." They're not going to do me a whole lot of good. I don't want to sit here and act like uh, a club in full swing is the absolute worst thing. I'm not saying go there for the fun because they do have non-alcoholic drinks. Uh, now, if it's a gentleman's club, I would suggest, fellas and ladies, don't bother. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to behave myself here, Apostle. I don't want to get kicked off your show for saying the wrong thing at the right time. But, you know, I don't think I'm a fan of some some wrinkled booty chick slapping her hind parts in my face for a dollar. I'm not down with that. Well, well, here, 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 here's the point, though. Here's the point. I got you. If I'm going to go to the club um, with one of my first friends, girlfriend, homeboy, whatever, then where is my witness? Exactly. Mm. I'm standing the okay. way of the... Can I ask another question, Apostle? Where's the integrity of your witness? Really? Because where see, is the... we, 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 we play this kind of stuff off, and we say, well, I ain't doing nothing but going to hang out with my friends. Well, first of all, he delivered you from sin. Why are you yeah. going back to the faith of sin? Come on. Make and then you got to realize, too, this is set up number two, because more than likely you were delivered from the club. Not fully. Mm-hmm. Not fully. See? See, you were delivered from the club. So why all of a sudden are you going to allow yourself to be bamboozled in the all this go tonight? There's going to be a comedy act. Mm-hmm. Well, Who's the before, the com- before the comedy act come out, you got to sit through two hours of folks sitting, blowing, and all this, and now you sitting there, and when you leave, you smell like the club. Mm-hmm. Come on. You don't smell like a comedy hour. Or mm-hmm. then again, you do like a comedy hour. Because Satan is laughing his head off. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, Apostle. A lot of people will find a reason and an excuse. And this is where I meant when I talked about mediocre or having mediocrity. This is what I meant when I talked about haphazard and somewhat. Because there are folk who are looking for an excuse to just do whatever it is they want to do and say it's all right. You know, our liberty should not be a cloak for sinning. Shouldn't be. And so if we're going to walk in this path, if we're going to stand in the path of sinners, if we're going to pretty much do what they're doing, what kind of, you ask the question, what kind of witness are we before the world? I mean, if they jump off a cliff, mm-hmm. you go into. No, I ain't going. Well, no, it's not a good, not a good idea. No, it's really not. It's really not. And uh, I find in this day and age, everybody thinks they're trend setting, and there are some who actually are trend setting, but most people are cookie cutters. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. what they do. What they do at night, they, uh, you know, I, I, I'm i going to use an example. I see Smith do it. I see Whitlow do it. And then I'm going to grab the scripture out of Timothy that says, that which you have seen and heard of me, do un, uh, give unto men who are apt to teach. Please stop dressing the scripture up to fit your nonsense. You know? Come on, no. I'm a little bothered. Right? I'm a little bothered because mm-hmm. here right now, 
is reigning. What fellowship has darkness with light? None, 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 whatsoever, none. And then it tells us that fresh water and salt water can't come out the same fountain. Talk to me a minute. Yes. I think you said it. Sweet water, salt water can't come out the same place. But you have a people today who they are hungry for that which does not supposed to be coming together. That's all they want. They want they want it their way. That's the time we live in. They want it to be Burger King. They want it their way. Amen, overseer. Amen. You have it your way. Got to have it. You know all the same. Miss Clara used to holler, where's the beef? You got people hollering, where's the beef in this day and age? If they don't have that excitement, if they ain't got that emotional uplift, if they ain't got that zeal or that zealous feel to whatever it is they're doing, as far as they're concerned, it's a waste of their time, effort, and energy. What's the problem with us? Why can't we just receive and accept at face value? And allow the spirit of God to take us. See, sometimes it, it and, and again, I'm not knocking praisers, worshipers, or people of that nature because, hey, listen, I'm a praiser and I'm a worshiper myself. But at the same time, you know, I ain't got to do the Holy Ghost huckabuck every time the room, I feel a little chill. It just could be cold in the room. You know what I mean? So, so, so we're saying, or I'm saying, we're saying, Standing in the way of sinners means that you have now come to a path of life where you are compromising your walk with God, your salvation, your light. Mm-hmm. Okay. I hear a lot of mm hmm. Somebody must be constipated. <laughs> wow. No, no, we're listening okay. to you, my dog. You're always presenting good information, good revelation. I, 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 we, I, I, is it a compromise to stand in the way of sinners? Because if yes, you look up the word way, if you look up the word way, it talks about uh, following a certain pattern. Mm-hmm. Right. See? And so when it says standing in the way of sinners, it's not talking about you're blocking. Well, it is talking about you're blocking them, but it's not talking about the uh, proverbial block. It's talking about you're blocking them from becoming like you. Mm-hmm. You're becoming like them. Well, and you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. When you start, and I mentioned earlier, Paul said it to the Corinthian church that uh, uh, bad men corrupt, uh, bad, communi- uh, bad communication, blah, 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 blah. Lord help me. Bad communication <laughs> or good manners. Think about this. Somebody's going to influence somebody when you come into the company of sinners or the ungodly. Now, if you're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and you feel yourself moving toward those things that do not glorify God, I hope that you're smart enough to move out of that company and move on. Because if you stay there long enough, it's going to draw you in. And then the next thing you know, hey, you're at the bar in the club, you know. Give me a Tangeray and ginger ale. Give me a rum and coke. Give me, I don't know, somebody name a drink or two because I'm from the old school. I can't remember a lot of these drinks, half of them. I know one thing for sure. Let me just do a quick sidebar. I thank God that I got delivered from going to clubs 
and from bars because back in the day when I went to clubs and bars, drinks were seventy five cents. I'm understanding they up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars now. Uh oh. Okay, so that's just a side. Part. Let me get back. Let me come back in. I'm sorry. What what watch this now? So we said number one is stay away from ungodly counsel. Mm-hmm. Number two is. Don't be bamboozled and start becoming a blockade to those that you should be leading by your light. Amen. You are the light of the world. Amen. A citizen yeah. cannot be here. He said, he said, put that light out where people can see it. See? So... When we start compromising, and, oh, well, you know, I don't think it's going to hurt. I'm going to go with y'all tonight. Turn into next week. Well, I think I'm just going to go for the conversation. Yeah, okay. You know, next mean. week, well, I'm just going to go because it's salad. And the next thing you know, you're just going because you're hooked and you're doing what you used to do. Amen. And then when you get yourself out and the devil backs off from you, you say, how did I get here? What am I doing sitting in here? <laughs> See, I, 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 I believe, honestly, we don't, a lot of us get lulled into sinful practices because we're not paying attention. It's like that fish that sees bait on a hook. He doesn't know that there's a hook there. That fish has no clue there's a hook. All they can see is that luscious worm or whatever it is that the fish is fishing with, and he casts it out there and it goes by the fish's face and he sees it. Wow, that looked pretty good. And so it comes back again, and he gets a whiff of it. I don't know if fish can breathe underwater or not. I gather they can, like we do here on Earth. And it smells good to him. Little does that fish know that underneath what that worm is covering is a deadly hook that's going to drag that fish to its death. And standing in the path of sinners, we're literally waiting to be dragged to our death, meaning separation. And in some cases, physical. All you got to do is be in the right place at the wrong time. A great example, uh, that uh, a couple of years ago, help me think, that club down there in Florida burned down. Now, there were a couple of stories where individuals just decided that particular night to stop by that club. Wrong place, right time. You know what I mean? Let, let's look at God. Let's look at So, don't hang out with ungodly people or take counsel from ungodly people. Uh-huh. Don't stand in the way of sinners. Uh-oh, here's a real good one. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Read, mm-hmm. that, little piece out there mm. Read that little piece out there, everybody. Yeah, nor sit I... in the seat of... It says, nor sit. Sit down. Now listen to this carefully. Nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridiculers. When you sit down no. to rest, what are you you're getting comfortable, aren't you? Thank you. Thank you're you. getting very comfortable. I'm just well, asking. No, here's the reality. Well, no, here's, 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 here's the reality. You owe him five dollars. <laughs> it, here's the reality There are some people They do it because They want To belong They want mm-hmm. to belong Since they want to belong They are willing To join in With the thing That God says stay away from I found mm-hmm. I found out a long time ago The Lord told me, he said, son, remember that you don't have to sit in 
to fit in. No. Nope. And that is something that they're sitting in to fit in because they want to be accepted. They want to feel like they have a part of, they are in tune with, that they're not missing anything. And that's unfortunately what people do today. They are looking for those opportunities to fit in. So that's why You're they right. will do what we would do. You're right. Now, what is a sponsor? Well, well, a, 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 well, somebody who, I guess I could say it this way, someone who is quick to make fun of somebody else because of some type of defect or something that they may otherwise think is wrong with that individual, somebody who ridicules, somebody who belittles, somebody who be somebody who puts other people down in an effort to make themselves feel better and to build themselves. Actually, a scoffer is an insecure person. Okay. Can, can, you can, 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 I, throw, can I throw another word that, that, throw we, in. that they need to tap into? Uh, uh, is a scarver are they a judge they think they are anyway I mean an unfair one but they're a judge they are they actually think they actually think they have the right to declare Mm-hmm. A judgment about somebody else's life. Uh huh. Huh? Have y'all ever mm. seen the scoffer? Have y'all ever seen him in the service? Look at him. Look at I him. have been around him. She thinks she dressed I, up today. I, them stockings, I've been around them stockings, them stockings don't even go with that outfit. Uh huh. Yeah. Look at that pocket. I don't know where they got that pocketbook from. It's a knockoff. I can tell. The buckle's crooked. Why are you looking that hard? <laughs> but I, I, I get it. I get it. You know? I mean, so, I did it. Go ahead. So a scarver, when you hang with a scarver, you hang with a dangerous person. You do? <laughs> because the Bible told us, judge not. Unless That's the you're going to be judged, ain't judgment. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it more than I, than I even care to talk about. People love to put their mouth on other folks, but when it turns back around and smack them, they can't handle it. Uh-uh. Never could. That's it. I'm leaving the church. These folk are always talking about somebody. So, well, if you had to talk about nobody, couldn't nobody talk about you? Well, and I would say that get up and we're going to leave the church because somebody talked about you. How many folk leave their job because somebody talked about it? No, I'm just asking. See, but, but, but what, here's what? the thing. They're not going to leave the job because that's where the money well, my But they'll leave is, the church. They'll leave the church because that's not where their God is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you the worst thing about it is they'll leave they'll leave here as a scoffer and go down the street and the pastor will take a meeting without even checking their character. And the next thing he know, he got confusion in his ministry. And they don't got mm-hmm. somebody else? Because they're down there. They done start their own judgment bar down there. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing right. Ain't nobody no good. Oh, that and that that that's what gets me. Oh Lord, I'm glad you let me say the words. And people that leave a church always talk about this one right, that one right. The only thing wasn't right was you with your dumb self. See, that's it. Mm. Every time you get around. You was in the middle of something causing confusion, and you left 
before you got revealed. That's what happened. And sometimes you left because you got revealed. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, listen, I mean, that's raw truth right there. That is raw. So tonight, I think we ought to call those uh, three deadly venoms. Say that again. I think tonight we ought to put that out and let everybody know those are three deadly venoms. Mm-hmm. Three venoms. Okay. As a matter of fact, all of y'all on social media, go ahead and post that now. Share it. Tag it. Whatever you got to do, put it on your messenger. There are three deadly venoms in Psalms 1, verse 1. Stay away. But here's the verse I've been wanting to get to all night. Because the truth of the mm-hmm. matter, we were just laying the foundation with all that that we just said. Amen. But listen at this. It says the reason you're going to have sin is stay away from the three deadly venoms. It said because your delight mm. is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. So I think I better ask the theme again tonight. Where's your appetite? Is your appetite set? Is your appetite set for foolishness? Or are you hungry for the things of God? Hmm. He said, but his delight. His delight. Somebody talk about a delight. What what does a delight mean? Oh boy. Delight is I mean delight is what you you know. Love, delight is what you refuse to do. Go ahead. Go for it. You going to say something else? No, no, I was waiting for Apostle Whitlow to finish. No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, my idea. I, I can equate it to, well, they, they've got, and they have them up there in Connecticut, too. There's an Italian ice cream. Store. When I go to a gelati, go get a gelati with a black cherry, uh, the black cherry ice, <laughs> that's a delight, okay? All right. Uh, when I was single and in the world and I saw a good-looking young lady and I kind of wanted to get my delight was to see how fat, oh, well, never mind all that, but you know where that picture is going. So, so actually what we're saying is that the word delight means this gives me pleasure. Yes. This fulfills my craving. Yes. This is what I desire. My mm-hmm. desire is not the counsel of wickedness. It is not to stand in the way of sinners. It is not to sit with judgmental people, but my delight, my desire, my craving is the law of the Lord. Somebody talk to me about the law of the Lord. Come on, Doc. Anybody going to talk to me about the law of the Lord? Give a possible opportunity and chance to say something. Okay. Uh, I don't hear him. So to me, the law of the Lord is basically the precepts of his word. What does his word say? I'm going to just take two simple things. We can find it in Deuteronomy as well as in uh, one of the Gospels, three of the Gospels, two of the, go- two of the Gospels. I'll get it right. Anyway. The bottom line is, it says, uh, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. Can you delight in that? You ought to delight in that. Because in that, the entire law is hinging. So love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. 
Delight in the law of the Lord because delighting in the law of the Lord, you're going to find comfort. Delighting in the law of the Lord, you're going to find strength. Delighting in the law of the Lord, you're going to find nourishment your spirit needs to sustain and to move forward. Delighting in the law of the Lord, you'll find yourself in a state of happiness state of bliss. You'll find yourself in a position where you're constantly, continuously uh, having your own private praise party because you start meditating and considering, soaring, and just allowing this word to permeate in your spirit, and you find yourself getting happy. I got to speak for myself right here because there are times when I'm thinking about the word, and I, I'm just about in my mind to preach myself happy because I'm just thinking about that one thing. And then, of course, this is a phrase we're all familiar with. When you're delighting yourself in the law of the Lord, you think about the fact that he's daily loading you with benefits. You start thinking about the fact that he's your shepherd. You start thinking about the fact that he allows you to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You start thinking about, like I said earlier, the fact that he's preparing a table in the presence of your enemy. You start thinking about the fact that he's made you an heir and a joint air with Jesus Christ. You start thinking about the fact that he's made you more than a con. I'm delighting in the word already. I'm delighting in his law already. So think about all that. Where do I have time, space uh, to turn around and tear somebody down, rip somebody up? I don't. So, so, so since you done fast forward it, <laughs> let, 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 me, let me say this then. This and here's what the Lord said to me early this morning. Uh huh. This Psalm 1 is not a lesson on bad company. Uh huh. It's a lesson on how is your appetite. Mm hmm. Are you yeah. so delighted in the Word of God? Is your pleasure. Is your taste bud, is your is your palate so after God that even when these three try to get you off course, you said no, my taste is for the word. Uh huh. Mm. My, my, right, my taste, my, my my diet calls for more of Him through His word. Uh-huh. My my diet. It is it's telling me I, I got to eat eight times uh, my daily bread. Yes, yeah. yeah. See, and, and we we I've seen people take this step and beat people half to death with that first verse, and that's really not what it's about. It's a nope. warning. It's a warning that if you get Entangled with these three spirits, you'll get ready to lose your appetite. Amen. Mm. Have you ever been so hungry that by the time they put the food on the table, you couldn't eat? <laughs> oh, yeah. You're a child, oh, yeah. You're a child down the biscuits and all the other stuff, the appetizers, the hors d'oeuvres. Or no, I, I'm yeah, afraid to wait. But they kept telling you uh, the food is coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. uh, we we just about ready. Twenty minutes uh-huh. later, we we went, well, and then you start you start nibbling on the cashews. You you, you start uh-huh. nibbling on, on the little pigs in the blanket they brought out and whatever else. By the time they really did bring the meal. You just got to knock yourself out of, out of the thing you, you really want to back in. It's you the fall. same way in our spiritual walk. We are looking and hanging and dealing with the wrong thing. Amen. Come and on. we get on course. And we wonder why it's so hard to get back off course. But when you start checking things, you find out you allow yourself to get off focus. Come on. Where your desire used to be to pray, 
Now it's hard uh-huh. for you to get out the bed. My goodness. Well, your, well, your desire used to be, hey, man, to spend time in his word. Now you don't have time. You got to run. Mm. But it said, but here's the light in the law. That's of it. the law. Watch this now. And it's, here's how serious your appetite has become. And in his law, does he what? Meditate. Meditate. Yes. Now, now meditate, meditate. meditate means you done got so in God that you just need to spend time with him. My goodness. And a lot of distractions won't allow you to meditate like you want to. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I look at the word like a thick, juicy steak. Now, you can cut it up. You ain't going to swallow that thing in two minutes. You want to make sure you grind that bad boy up. And when it's ground up in your mouth, whatever the case may be, then you start swallowing. Juice, flavor, and all. When the word is taken, you take time to let that word permeate your spirit, put yourself in a position where you're thinking about it. I mean, and I don't mean just thinking about it. You know you know how we do sometimes. A thought passes your mind, and for that moment, that thought is come and gone. But when you have taken the time to meditate in that word, when you take mm-hmm. your time. Now, you got some comments here, uh, Apostle. Should I read them now, or should I hold them? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Sister Salisbury says, we must hunger for righteousness, Matthew 5, 6. She says, as we hunger for righteousness, our habits, and I think she meant to add the word lifestyle, it says our habits and life changes. I agree with that. Is and that just a spirit? Is that earnest thing? No, 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 no. I wish it were. And this is uh this young lady lives down here in uh in Maryland. All right. Thank you for that comment. And it is true. It is true. What's our other comment? Uh, that way, I put them all together that time, so they can, cause so they could run together. Okay, well, all those statements were wonderful, and they work, amen, and are definitely true, amen, to our conversation tonight, amen. So, uh, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he. Meditate. Yep. Now, if you look at that yeah. word, meditate, there's another M word you got to look at. The word called mutter. Um. M-U-T-T-E-R. To mutter. It means to almost, uh, as it were, we say, uh, to babble. But you're not really babbling, but you have the word of God going over and over in your spirit. That's what meditation is. And, and uh, I know we keep bringing it up like everybody knows us, but that's the way we were taught by Dr. Maddie Agnesson Darden. And when she asked that's- you to go over and learn a scripture, she wasn't talking about two or three verses. She would tell you to go home and learn the whole fifth chapter of Matthew, and if you miss yeah. the word, sit down. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I told yeah. you to go home and study. I told you to go home and study this fifth chapter, and you ain't even mother the chapter. You don't miss the word. I'm going to tell you, you don't honestly. Know what have, a have a seat. Come back next week when you're ready. Maddie Atkinson Darden was no joke when it came to the word. No joke whatsoever. I mean, if you and turn around, my, go ahead. And then my father, if he asks you to read a scripture in the office, especially, and then you get out there and you fumble. 
bubbling and bubbling. He'll look right, right around at the rest of the preacher. Is there somebody that can read the scripture? Ah. Uh, so he'll turn around and say, is there somebody that can read, huh? Yeah. He wants to know. <laughs> read the scripture, please. <laughs> you know why? Because while you uh, were in the office, you had time to go over that scripture. And if there were words and things like that, that you could not do, you should have passed it on. Exactly. Because the word is just that precious. Mm-hmm. And you don't need nobody being thrown off by your non-reading. Uh-oh. Amen. But he says, you have developed such an appetite mm-hmm. that not only do you want to delight in the word, you just want to meditate in it how long? Day and you want, you want to make a habit out of it. You want it to be part of your DNA. You want it, you want to think about it. It's just something that happens. And, and, and it bothered me because I was brought up in ministry a different way. But it bothers me, preachers who only read the Bible when they try to find something to preach. Mm. I thought the word what? said over there in Second Timothy two fifteen, study to show thyself approved. Under That's God, what it says. A, a workman that need not to be ashamed, right? In Amen. The word of truth. And if you're going to be that kind of sharp preacher, you can't study on Friday and Saturday and think you're ready for Sunday. Or you got to go preach on Wednesday. Here it is Tuesday night and, and Wednesday morning. you throwing something together. No, 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 no. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Amen. You got to have you got to have a hunger. What 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 did he say over there? Amen. In the gospel, he that what hungers and thirsts. And that's exactly right. Shall be filled. Have the right to shall be filled. If you Amen. don't have mm-hmm. a desire, the what? Oh God, you want to make me upset? In my in my life and time, let me go out with a young lady, and you get to the restaurant. She told me, "Oh, all I want is a salad." <laughs> and we could have went to the grocery store and got a packet of mixed salad, some tomatoes and cucumbers and stuff, and made a salad and stayed at the house and watched up on the TV. And that's the way it is with a lot of saints. Y'all not eating, y'all snacking. Uh, say that. Y'all snacking. It's a shame. Uh, You've been 65, 10, 15, 20 years and still don't know nothing but the Lord is my shepherd. My goodness. Our apostle, hey, we're at the top of the hour. Are you kidding? Huh? We're at the top of the hour. All right. And you can't even. And you can't even quote the whole 20, 23rd Psalm. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not walk. Well, what about the rest of it? Oh, I got some folk out there. Oh, they could tear that scripture up. Lord is my shepherd, and I think I'm still going to walk. They put anything in there. <laughs> well, brothers, I hear Alfred talking to me. Albert said those in the listening audience have been naughty tonight. And so we are not able to finish this podcast tonight of this lovely subject. Where is your appetite? So you're going to have to tune in next week as we try it again to see where is your appetite. And so we bless God. Amen. Uh, last thought, overseer. Well, my last thought would go from.
from here. I want God to save me. I want to be prosperous and I want to be uh, I want to be blessed. I've got to stay away from the three deadly venoms if I want to see that happen. All right. Pause the window, close the remarks. My thoughts are this. Check your taste buds. <laughs> See what it is that you've been hungry. See what you've been missing in your diet. Too much mm-hmm. candy it might give you a rottenness. Somewhere inside of you. That's my thought. Amen. Well, I, my, Dr. Kim, do you have a closing remark? <laughs> All right, I guess. You I just want to say that keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is just the Lord, and don't get out the boat without knowing who you trust. When you get up on the boat, make sure you keep your eyes on God. And that would be my closing statement. All right.